What we're going to be going over here, diluted earnings per share for contingent issuance agreements. And this is where you issue shares of common stock based on meeting certain conditions or goals here. So for our example here, Corporation A purchased Corporation B and one of the terms of the merger was that if Corporation B's income for year 20x2 exceeded a set amount or a goal amount, 10,000 additional shares of common stock would be issued here to Corporation B's stockholders in year 20x3 here. So we're going to be looking at two cases here. Case one here, this is where Corp B exceeds that income goal that was set. So Corp B's income goal was set at $220,000 here for year 20x2 here. And Corp B's income here for year 20x1 was $250,000. So the question we have here is what contingent share should be included in Corporation A's here, earnings per share here for year 20x1. And then looking at case two here, this is where Corp B does not meet the income goal that was set here for 20x2. And the question is, should those contingent shares that we have here be included in Corporation A's earnings per share here for 20x1? So what we're looking at in this problem here is that uh, Corporation A is going to issue additional shares of stock here, what they call contingent shares of stock here, to a Corporation B's shareholders if they can meet a certain a set goal of income here and it was defined here and they'd have to meet that goal of income here uh, in year 20x2 but the shares or those additional or those contingent shares here wouldn't been paid out until 20x3 and then we're looking at the case here where we're looking at we ha have to calculate the earnings per share here for corporation a based on year 20x1 here so we have to determine here if if any of those contingent shares here should be included in Corporation, Corporation A's earnings here in year 20x1. Okay, so let's go down and let's first look at this uh, conting our contingent stock issuance agreements. Now, in business combinations here, the acquire corporation, in this case it would be our Corporation A here, may promise to issue additional shares to the shareholders of the company being acquired, and in this case it's Company B here that's being acquired, and those additional shares here of stock are called contingent shares here. Now, those would be issued if certain conditions are met or attained here. Okay, so contingent stock issue agreements can be based on uh, really two uh, different items here. You can either base them on the passage or time or two here, the attainment of certain earnings or market price levels. And okay, they, that in that case here, you would include those contingent shares as outstanding or in the diluted earnings per share here. Number one, if the passage of time occurs during the year here, or two, you meet the earnings or market price by the end of the year or that earnings or market prices are currently being attained. So those are the, those are two conditions here and we've broke it down here further by uh, meeting these earnings or market prices by the end of the year here, that's key, or if they're currently being attained earlier in the year or earlier period. And that's what we're really gonna be looking at in this case here. So, okay, let's go up and look at what our problem is here. So again, our contingent stock issuance agreement, this is where Corporation A's diluted, uh, and we're gonna be calculating Corporation A's diluted earnings per share here. Remember, Corporation A is the acquiring co company here. So, and this is our problem here. So if Corporation B, the company acquired here, could meet those income goals, Corporation A would issue those 10,000 additional shares of common stock here to Corp B's uh, shareholders. So we're going to look at our two uh, cases here. For First off for A here, the 20x2, year 20x2 goal was set at $220,000 for the income goal here and 20x1's income here uh, for Corporation B was actually $250,000. So the goal was met here. Uh, they exceeded the income, uh, the income here was exceed of $250,000 here exceeded the goal amount here of $220,000. And then our cash second case here uh, goal again for 20x2 was set at 220,000 but the 20x1 income here attained by corporation B here was only $180,000 so in this case the goal was not met here income only 180,000 versus the goal amount here of 220,000 okay so let's look at case one here where the income goal is met by corporation B so the, again the goal was set here for year 20x2 and was met here in 20x1 here, but the common
common stock shares will not be issued here until 20x3. So the question we have to answer here, should those contingent shares be included in your 20x1's earnings per share here for Corporation A? The bigger question we have here is, this is the case here. Say the goal was, uh, the goal in our example here was attained here in 20x1 here, but the goal was actually set here for year 20x2, but the stock was actually issued here in year 20x3. So really, where should those contingent shares or those extra shares be included? Should they have been included here in our year 20x1 earnings per share, or when the goal was actually met here in year 20x2, or in the case here where the uh, stocks were actually issued here in 20x3. So really that's the question we have to look at here when you're looking at those contingent issuance agreements. Is, um, based on those goals, the set dates here, and when we're actually issuing the shares here. Now our rule is this here. The goal was attained in 20x1, so then those are the year that those contingent shares should be included in the earnings per share when they're met here. So our rule is here, when you meet the earnings by the end of the year or if those earnings are currently being attained earlier here. So that's our that's our question. That's the answer to our question here on whether those uh, contingent shares here, those additional 10,000 shares should be included in the 20x1 earnings per share. But we have to look at our years here and just it seems like uh, when the goal set for 20x2, it seems like a reasonable case here where you could include those uh, extra contingent shares here in 20x2. And certainly the case here where, where the shares were actually issued here in 20x3, you would say those contingent, they could be included as contingent shares here. But in the case here where the goal was met here in 20x1 here, that's where those contingent shares are going to come in and they're going to be included in the earnings per share. But in further years here in 20x2 and 20x3, those uh, common stocks or those shares that we've included here in your 20x2 in 20x1 are actually going to be sitting out here in years 20x2 and 20, 20x3 as uh, normal common stocks. So they would the earnings per share here uh, for this following years will actually include those contingent shares here that were issued here in 20x1. Okay, so let's go down here and let's, uh, this again, we're looking at that 20x1's earnings per share here. And just to repeat here, the goal was attained in year 20x1. So they would be included in those uh, earnings per share here when that goal was met. And that's our general rule here. So going down and looking at our diluted earnings per share here. That's simply taking a net income for the, in this case, it's going to be Corporation A, the acquiring company, and you divide it by the number of shares of common stock that are outstanding for the year here. Plus, this is where those contingent shares come into, into play here. So those are the contingent shares. Those are those, those 10,000 extra shares here that the um, Corporation A is going to issue to Corporation B, providing they met those, that certain goal, that income goal here. So let's, and that equals our the division, our net income divided by the total number or the average number of common stocks outstanding plus the contingent shares here. Uh, divide that into our net income will eat our, equal our diluted earnings per share. Okay, so just for example here, let's assume that Corp A's net income was a million and a half here for the year, and they had forty thousand shares of common stock outstanding. Now this is the case here where those contingent shares, those ten thousand additional contingent shares, would be added. So taking our total net income here divided by our number of shares, common stock outstanding, plus the contingent shares here of ten thousand. Uh, that would equal uh, $30 per share here for a 20x1 earnings per share. And that's a diluted earnings per share because we had to add in those additional 10,000 shares here. So if it wasn't diluted, all you, if, if the 10,000 additional shares here, contingent shares weren't included, you would actually be looking at a million and a half here, your net income divided only by 40,000, the average number of shares outstanding. Okay, so case A here, or case 1 here, or A here, uh, you include those contingent common stock shares here in 20x1. The goal was set here for 20x2 here, year 20x2, where that income goal had to be met here, but it was actually attained here in 20x1. Therefore, our rule is you include those contingent shares here in your 
total number of shares that you'd have outstanding here um, to determine your in in this case the diluted earnings per share here again our rule of contingent shares would be included in the 20x1 earnings per share because the earnings level is currently being met or attained even though the goal was set for 20x2 and even though the goal are the not only the goal but the fact that those extra additional shares or those contingent shares here are going to actually be issued to the shareholders in year 20x3 and we went through that discussion here and then just lastly to talk about our case two here and that's where the goals were not met here so in the case here where those income goals or those goals that were set here for corporation b and they were not being met here corporation a would not include any contingent shares here if there's goals are not being met here so that's that's the only um, deal here goals not being met therefore you'd not include any of those contingent shares in your earnings per share calculation okay so that'll end our discussion here we can go up here and look at it again here but the the our problem was here um, we had we had just reviewing it one more time here our goal was set here we had to corporation B here had to earn some income here by a set amount here in year 20x2 a corporation B actually uh, attained that goal in an early year earlier year here 20x1 here but the shares based on that goal uh, corporation b's shareholders wouldn't actually receive those shock stocks here or corporation a wouldn't issue those stocks here to corporation b shareholders until year 20x3 but based on our rule here when you meet the earnings by the end of the year or those earning uh, or their currently earnings are currently being attained or those goals are currently being attained then you would include them in the year that they're being attained here and okay so that'll end our discussion here on our diluted earnings per share here based on some contingent shares of stock under these contingent issuance agreements